Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Today I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 14. This is the very end of the letter that the Apostle Paul is writing to a church in Corinth. And this is what it says. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, use it, use it that you might draw us closer to you and more in your likeness. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Gary Smalley was a, an author and psychologist in one of his books, the title, The Blessing, he asked a hundred people, in what way, what one specific way did you know that you had received your father's blessing? Well, I'm not going to read all 100 answers, but here are a few of them to get a, kind of a, an idea of the way people answered. One person said, my father would put his arm around me at church and let me lay my head on his shoulder. Another one said, when I wrecked my parents' car, my father's first reaction was to hug me and let me cry instead of yelling at me. Another person said, my father went with me when I had to take back an ugly dress a saleswoman had talked me into buying. Someone else said, my father would let me practice pitching to him for a long time when he got home from work. Another said, even though I'd never seen him cry before, my father cried during my wedding because he was going to miss me because I would no longer be at home. There are a lot of ways that fathers give their blessings. Sometimes it's through the affirming touch, like that person talked about. My father let me lay his, his, my head on his shoulder during church. Sometimes it's affirming words. Sometimes it's the time spent that that blessing is given by the Father. Sometimes it's a, a gift. It's not the, the size of the gift. It's that the, the gift represents a time or an experience that you had together. Gift from the Father. Sometimes it's just the way that the dads have a way to, to help and do for others. It's Father's Day. And we do well to to think about ways to, to show our children blessing. Blessing. It's an important thing. It's a connection between father and child. And um, it's the way that the Apostle Paul saw his relationship with the church there in Corinth. He had helped start that church. And we know that he wrote at least three letters to that church. And two of them we still have. And he's trying to do what a father tries to do. He's helping them try and grow up. He's trying to, to help them mature, to overcome adversity. He's trying to help them 
know their identity, who they are, and recognize the strengths that they have. Now, this isn't a church that did everything right, so, so he just heaped blessing upon blessing upon kind word. No, this is a church that messed up fairly often. He was trying to navigate them from a culture that was common in Greece and in Roman, in the Roman Empire. It was a culture that said self-interest is what's most important. And being able to have, uh, to dominate the people around you so you can have some sense of, of, of fame and notoriety. It was a culture that said your wants and your desires are your highest goals. And the more power that you have, well, then you can get more of what your heart desires. Well, this wasn't at all what it meant to be a, a, a new creation. So Paul, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15, he says, In Christ I became your father in the gospel. So he's trying to lead them as a father and, and he wants them to know what their strengths are. So in 2 Corinthians 13, 15, he says, Do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? It's your greatest strength. Don't you recognize it? William Randolph Hearst was a famous newspaper owner and multimillionaire. He once saw a print of a famous painting, oil painting, and he loved it. He hired a detective to, to find that oil painting where it was. Well, several months later and several thousand dollars later, the detective found the painting with some good news and some not so good news. The good news was that yes, he found it. The not so good news was that Hearst already owned the painting. It was in one of his warehouses. Very often it is that we seek the things that we, we already have. We seek the, the gifts of God that are already available to us. We just don't recognize it. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. At the very end of his letter, Paul gives the blessing. The blessing to the, to the people in Corinth. It's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago in Constantia, New York, there was a, a, an incident where the sheriff's deputy was called to a, an accident. Car had run into a, a gas pump at the gas station. Fortunately, it didn't cause a fire and there was no explosion. But the car was there that had run into the, the gas pump that was just no driver. Well, Bill Cromie was the officer who, who responded to the accident, and he looked over and saw some woods close by. He thought, well, maybe the driver had run into the woods. He went into the woods, and the driver wasn't hard to find at all. He was drunk, and he was thrashing around. He was banging into trees and, and through brush. He was scraped up. He was scratched up. He was bleeding. He was exhausted, and as soon as Officer Cromie shined his light on him, that's when the man said, well, you must be Superman. Man, you've been chasing me for 45 minutes. You ain't even winded. You ain't even messed up the crease on your pants. How'd you do it? Officer Cromie said, I just got here. That's when the man said, you mean I've been chasing myself? Well, if I'm that stupid, you may as well put me in jail. <laughs> Chasing himself. Chasing himself. You and I have been given a gift. And that gift is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But until we know that's a gift that we've received, we end up chasing ourselves. We end up letting the past chase us. The fear of, of being found out. The fear of what others think. Worry. 
We let not just what we've done, but who we believe that we are, shame chase us and chase us and chase us. The good news is that Jesus took on himself all those things that would chase us, all those things that would destroy us, all those things that would conquer us. He took all that on himself. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Christ had no sin, but God made him become sin so that in Christ we could become right with God. That Jesus took on all those things that would chase us and destroy us. He took them on himself and when he, he was nailed to the cross, he took away their power. He killed them once and for all. When he rose from the grave, he gave that power to, to you and me that they would no longer chase us, that the guilt would no longer rule our lives, that shame, that fear, that worry, that anxiety, that sin, it would no longer rule our lives, no longer chase us. It's a blessing. The blessing is called grace, and it's been given to, to you and me. Receive the blessing of the grace the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, the second thing I want to talk about this morning is the love of God. A lot of times when I, I say the, the love of God, people go, oh, well, I know what love's all about. I mean, it's Father's Day. Lots of folks have experienced love they have for children. Love they have for their children, whether it be a, a father's love or a mother's love. Hopefully, you've experienced a parent's love. But... It's not only the, the love that a, that a parent has for their children, especially celebrating here on Father's Day. It's, um, you know, sometimes people think of the, the, the love uh, that we have for a husband and wife, for a friend, for a girlfriend, a boyfriend. You know, that, that falling in love, that feeling of love that takes us over. Heard somebody say, love is that feeling you feel when you're feeling something you've never felt before. That, that feeling that's a wonderful part of it. Or sometimes we think of love as here later on in this week, Friday and also Sunday afternoon. We'll be celebrating our patriotic concert, Love of Country. And to be thankful. Thankful for our country. Love of country is, is something wonderful. And it ought to be celebrated. But when we talk about all these natural loves, I also think about what C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis said, Every human love has a tendency to claim for itself divine authority. That the love of a father, or love of a mother, actually what it is is instinct. That, that we don't love everyone's children the same. We love our children the most. Because it's natural love. Even a, a lioness loves her cubs. But it's, it's not a Christian love, that's for certain. There's no divine authority. By being a parent and loving your children, it's natural. That feeling where you're feeling what you've that you're feeling something you've never felt before. That falling in love, that's a wonderful thing. But it's a love that, well, it's a love that is an appetite. It draws us toward the feeling. It attracts us toward the feeling to the benefit of, of, of being satisfied in that love. The love of country. Too often it grows into a a nationalism that says, my country, whatever it does, right or wrong. And none of these are Christian love. Right here in the Bible where it says the love of God, there's a special word used for that love, and it's the word that's used all through the Bible. 99.9 tenths percent of the time, the word is agape. And it's not an appetite, and it's not an instinct. It's not a feeling that we fall into. It's a choice. That the love of God is not 
that we're so lovable that he couldn't help but fall in love with us. It's not even the instinct of a father. Even when, when, when Jesus talks about the father's love, even when he talks about the, I call you my friends in that love, even when the Bible talks about husbands love your wives, that's the love. It's the love not of a falling, not of a feeling, not of instinct. It's a choice. It's an act of the will. And it's the power of God, the power of God that, that transforms our wills to be able to love even one who's not so lovable, that we choose to do what's best for them, not just what's best for us, not just what serves us, to do what's best for another, that it's the love of God that transforms us where we can love our enemies, and still do what's best for the other, not just what's best for us. We can love those who have hurt us. Love those in doing what's best for them, even when it's hard or difficult. It's the love of God that transforms us to have a love, that, to do what's, what's best for the other and not just what's best for us. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Receive the blessing of the love of God. Receive the blessing of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the last thing that I want to talk about this, 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 this morning is receive the blessing of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Murphy, North Carolina is a little town just right over the state line from Georgia into North Carolina. There's a story about a woman who is a little bit on the eccentric side, lived in Murphy, North Carolina. In her will, she had stated that she wanted to deed a part of her inheritance to God. Well, the judge was a little bit curious about how he was going to probate that will. So, feeling a little cheeky, he turned to the sheriff's deputy and he said, Deputy, here's a summons. Go get God. Bring him to my court. Well, two, week, two weeks went by when the deputy returned. And he said, after due and diligent searching, that God cannot be found in Murphy, North Carolina. <laughs> well, I... I understand the sentiment, but he wasn't looking in the right place. It's 1 Corinthians 3.16. says, do you not know you are a temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? And the word you there is plural. So if it had been written correctly in the Bible, it would have said, don't y'all know y'all are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in all y'all. It's where two or more are gathered that the Spirit of God is here with a power that we don't have on our own. The Spirit of God to, to transform us in the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit where He joins our spirit with His Spirit. It's not an, an economic power where money makes right. It's not a political power where majority makes right. It's not a a power of force where might makes right. It's the greatest power in the universe. And that name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. This morning my prayer is that, that you realize, you realize what, what, what Paul is calling us to here. You recognize this about yourself that Jesus Christ is in you. And Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. We're in a time right now where we hear a lot of bad news. And the bad news tries to get us to be fearful and worried and anxious. Jesus has more for you and me than that. It's fellowship and the power of His Holy Spirit. Where we know, we know who we are and whose we are. 
we belong to him. And greater is he who is in, in you and me than, than he who is in the world. And the power of his spirit, it's there every breath and every minute. The love of God, it's a love that transforms us to see the world not the way that is natural or serves us. It's to see in this world the new creation that Jesus ushered in. A love that transforms us and the way we see those around us. That it's not only the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it's not only the love of God, that it's a grace. A grace that's been given to you and to me. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's available to you today. I want to invite you to receive the blessing. Pray with me. Jesus, what you did on the cross, it wasn't just a, a, a drama acted out years ago. It's a power that changed all of history. And you invite us to be a part of that power. The power that took away the power of sin and death took away the power of shame and, and fear, took away the power of anxiousness and all those things that would, would conquer us and defeat us and chase us. You nailed it to the cross. And when you rose from the grave, you gave that power to us. Lord, this day, may we recognize in ourselves That Jesus Christ, you are in us. Maybe that there are folks listening that have never invited you to make your home in their hearts. Never received the power of your blessing. It's who we are. We were made to be yours. Part of your new creation. Breathe Holy Spirit on us this day. May we be transformed by it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.